How do you get a girl from a picture to go, I'm going to get her to go to dinner with me? Whenever I talk to girls, they don't really come off like crazy, really possessive. As a middle-aged man, I have wondered at nauseum what it's like lately for a 20-ish, you know, about 18 to 25, 30 maybe, but really that age range what it's like to live in america the united states of america to be more specific i'm just fascinated by this because our time i'm 51 so whenever i was that age this country and world was vastly different i was too young and dumb to see the direction of where things were headed so i'm just absolutely fascinated what how do you view the United States. Well, oh, first of all, this <laughs> this is Noah Man. He is the only 21? 21. He's the only 21-year-old guy I could snag for this interview because all the other 21-year-olds are like, eh, I can't do it. I got to go play a video game. <laughs> <laughs> so I got him. Tell me, what is it like? Or what do you it's, think about it? It's bad. All right, so you'd say the United it's States bad. is bad. All right, so give me an example. What did, what would make you say that? Social media, number one. All right, so what's bad with social media? I don't know. It's like sometimes I'm good about it, sometimes I'm bad about it. But lately well, what does here, that mean? What does good well, and bad mean? Like lately, you just go eat dinner with your family or something. And you see everybody pulling out their phones and Snapchatting on Instagram, on TikTok. Right, so it, does, does, do you think that contributes to y'all's generation have such a, a short attention span? Yeah, probably. Yeah? All right, so outside of social media, since you just labeled all of the United States as bad, I would like to know, outside of social media, what do you think is bad? I don't know, just people sometimes. They don't know how to communicate with each other at all. Yeah, the lack of communication is a big problem. And that goes into a lot of other topics that we discuss here a lot is that when we get aggravated and we see other people not communicating well or we see other people we don't like, we can find those aspects of ourselves and we can see them inside of us. And I think that's one of the reasons why we get aggravated. But are there any good qualities that you can think of as a young man for this country? It's a hard one. <laughs> I I, <laughs> yeah it, it is a difficult question especially whenever we well for the most part we take a lot of things for granted uh, we do have running water in most uh, parts of the country even though it's filled with all sorts of poisons um, we do have primarily good electricity everywhere even though we're getting overcharged for it uh, what else would be good about this country uh, we have a decent selection of automobiles to choose from if we have enough money to buy one what else do we have we definitely got enough food we definitely have enough food and most of it is just fabulously poisonous <laughs> it is great uh, if you like poison outside of those things there is still uh, i'll bring some things to mind for you there, there's still right now the opportunity to be independent to a, a smaller degree than before, but you can still make some financial independence. You, it's, it's becoming increasingly more and more difficult, but it's still possible now. We do still have the ability to form communities together so we can rely upon each other. And we still have the ability to get together to work on ourselves to hopefully ripple that out uh, and be better. Uh, we still got, uh, that's, uh, off the top of my head, that's about the best I got. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, the propaganda and, uh, uh, all the distractions that take us away from our, our learning ourselves so we can learn each other and reach out to the infinite intelligence and become better people. It's, it's difficult. So what is it like to date a girl, uh, basically your age, not some MILF, you know, <laughs> that's mature and has an understanding of life. Uh, like what is it to date a young girl in this country? They just don't, they don't understand anything. Is, but well, right, you say they don't understand, so you have conversations with them. Yeah. All right, so what is the typical conversation with a 21-year-old girl that Noah chose to go out with? 
Not the current one because we think yeah. you, you like her. We think. We're not sure. I <laughs> but, do. Uh, she's, so, she's gonna watch this. Cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> And so the typical conversation. You pick her up. What 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 do you discuss? Well, normally you got to do all the talking because she doesn't even know what to talk about. Uh, all right. So well, that's bad. Is it, you think that's just the choice of girls that you're picking, or I mean, are you picking them up at a brothel? <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. I just feel like everybody's brain has been washed by social media really bad. All right. So everybody, everybody you see, they post Instagram pictures and they think they're all happy and doing this and that, but really they're not happy at all. Well, yeah, you see that all the time. I see it quite a bit. You know, everybody's sitting around bored out of their mind. All of a sudden a camera goes up and they're like, oh, geez, oh, we're so yeah. happy. And then they just go back to sitting doing the same stupid crap they were doing a second ago. Yeah. All right. So where do you find these girls to have a conversation with yourself so in front of them? <laughs> yeah, I guess basically. Right. So you, you have social media. So you pick them up on what Facebook, Tinder, Bumble. Instagram. I love, no, chi I love, <laughs> I love chicks.com. I mean, what, what are you doing? Instagram, the bar, wherever. And, and we do have uh, my wife yapping out over here. Y'all can hear her. <laughs> yeah. So you pick them up. You don't really know them. How does the conversation go that you would even want to ask somebody out then? Or you're just going for looks? Oh, well, that's me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course. That's, yeah. There's no other. The first interaction is always okay, I find them physically attractive. So then you find that physically attraction, you know, you get together and y'all talk about what? Like, how do you Just, get a girl from a picture to go, I'm going to get her to go to dinner with me? Well, whenever I talk to girls, they don't really come off like crazy, all clingy, just like really possessive. Ah, so really possessive. Every girl that you discuss anything with or get to go on a date, they're clingy, and possessive. possessive toxic just all of it that's what we got to live with in here that's what y'all got to live with but do you think any of that toxicity comes from yourself too i mean are you fe are you feeding the, are you feeding the cycle of the toxicity it could be sometimes yeah yeah so maybe if we looked in the mirror and uh did a little uh self-examination maybe we could pick uh weed through the the junk to find somebody of quality probably yeah. I mean, there are some quality girls out there. I mean, duh, look at your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you too, baby. Yeah, good, good luck with that. <laughs> All right, so you're living in the United States. You have a, you, you are afforded the opportunity to make a decision on what type of profession you want to go in. You chose a noble profession of being an electrician. So you get this job. You're working it. You're, you're you're elevating yourself and your knowledge in, in that. And that's a part of America. That's a, a good thing. So in doing that, in your experience and the your new experience in the workforce, what, how do you view the, uh, the the workplace? Not necessarily your job, but the the opportunities available to you in the profession that you picked in this well, in this country. Well, there's definitely opportunities with that, but I think you said something said something about something. But I feel like a lot of people come out of high school and they. Uh, get out of high school and you just grow up you get fed by your bombs over here your dads and then all of a sudden you're just hit with life yeah well of course every most people are a product of uh, public school system and even the private school system is in most cases not much better but you have a a no life learning experience for the most part mm -mm. you know most people uh, like home ec should be a really big deal. L knowing how to write a check, filling out simple paperwork, yeah. doing uh, the things that are required of you as an adult to be able to function in life. Those are primarily absent for most people until they're just thrown into mm -hmm. the wolves. Oh, here's life. Yep. Take it. Hey, welcome to America. Good luck. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's almost like you're a mental immigrant. Like you haven't arrived in America, the United States, until you go out on your own. And then you realize, oh, wait, I want, I, I want, I want my, 
ID card back for the house. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go back. I want to go back to mom and daddy's. That is a, a big realization because who's going to wash your clothes? Who's going to wash your car? Who's going to remind you to do this or that? Oh, I got a crap. I got to open a bank account. I got you know all, all of these things. Oh God, Th those are th those are big real problems in this country. That's another negative that most people aren't fully aware of how to structure and live their lives when they move out. All right, I'm really disappointed in uh, the the level of, from what I've seen of y'all's age group, very, very short attention spans. Like if you can't hold somebody's attention for more than one, three, four seconds, conversation's over. Mm. They're already daydreaming. There are, they can't wait to look up the 10 second TikTok and, and just keep doing that yeah. to keep stimulating their mind that's stimulating their mind into nothing. They, they haven't exercised themselves enough to bring, to, to bring a level of communicative experience, experiential uh, knowledge into a conversation because they don't exercise their mind. You know, if you ain't making your mind doing jumping jacks, it ain't ever going to do jumping jacks. You know, I mean, you, you got to you got to work yourself. So just in this conversation is enlightening and an empowering because if meeting a chick is uh, done through social media or some type of Internet, something or another. Yeah, then they're clingy, possessive, short attention spans. Well, that's a problem for uh, masculinity and being a male. Uh, that is a problem all the way around. But also the, all of these issues too are a direct reflection of yourself. The people that you're picking, the people you're choosing to hang around because we are magnets. So if you're a mag, you, you are magnetizing what you want. You might not be aware of it in your mind, but yeah. you're attracting that. So that, that's what's pulling to you. So if you want clingy, trashy, slutty hoes, that, <laughs> that's what you're gonna get. But if you, if you want uh, anything else, well then you have to say no to no. No, I don't want that. No, I want to be around somebody who's going to be engaging. That's what I want. I want to expand my own attention span. So I'm going to do these things. I am going to do that. So maybe if we just all of us start doing that, maybe the other people around us start to spread out. And then America is all of a sudden not so bad. All of a sudden yeah. we wake up and go, oh, wow, there we are the shining city on the hill. This is the grand place to be. Uh, maybe that's not going to happen. There's the possibility. I hope so. Uh, we'll find out. But that was enlightening. Do you have anything else to say on what it's like to be a man in the United well, States? I did want to ask you a question. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. What? Don't you think all of a sudden once phones and all this other stuff came out that it got different? Like the days whenever you couldn't get on your phone and text somebody if you want to hang out or talk to somebody, you went over to their house and hung out and had conversations, you can tell the difference between everybody, right? No, oh, for sure. Whenever it was such a big deal to have a cell phone, whenever I was 16, we just had these big bag phones or you had this big thing installed in your car. And my dad was a salesman, I forget the company, but they put a cell phone in his car. And my dad said, we're driving past my girlfriend's house. He says, call her. And, uh, cause I said, Hey dad, that's my, where my girlfriend lives. He goes, call her. So I call her and I tell her, Hey, I, I'm driving down your street right now. She didn't believe me. Her parents heard her say that there's no way you're driving down the street. Her parents, all of a sudden I could hear them start talking bad about me. Like, Oh, you know, who'd you pick to be your boyfriend? This guy's an idiot liar and i told him while i'm on the phone y'all come outside we're backing up my dad i asked my dad to back up we drive and i'm talking to her on the phone and they're waving through the window that was a massive big deal like it was huge and it was so big that you know that really sticks out of my mind but you're right it was easier when we first had cell phones because it was easier to contact your buddy hey i'm coming over you want to come over Y'all want to go do something? Because before, if they weren't home, you'd have to leave a message at their house and maybe they got it that day or the next day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but that was the habit. You would walk directly in your house and hit your little button to see who left you a message that you need to call back. Communication was much more important. There was no, if I'm going to sit down with you and have a talk, there was none of that. Like, yeah. we're talking. Or, what am I going to talk about? Yeah. 
the, no, nothing like that. It has fundamentally made things uh, very bad, but it has the potential to do great stuff. Like I can send business emails and documents and we can communicate quickly. We can get things, we can be a lot more productive. And then at the same time, you can lose your mind uh, chasing after video games or getting addicted to flicking through uh, whatever Instagram, chick site you look at. TikTok. Yeah, take what all these, all these distractions that prevent you from knowing yourself, from reaching a higher power, meditating, uh, learning, uh, all of the things that are a part of being a man or a woman, which we know the definitions of those. And that is uh, taken away because people have gotten addicted to them. Mm -hmm. It is an addiction. Yeah, just... So, I mean, to answer your question, I, I think uh, it, it equally is good and it can, equally bad. It just depends on the user and how you use it. Are you going to say, no, I'm not watching uh, TikTok. I'm not doing, I'm not allowing them to control the dopamines that are getting released and all the other chemicals released in my mind. I'm not going to let them control how I react to anything. So I just won't use it. That is a choice. Most people don't have the ability to do that because they're addicted. They won't sit down and go, what are my habits? Like our last podcast, what are my habits? What am I wasting my time on? What am I doing? They just can't do it. No, I don't, why, why would I want to do that? Why would I even want to think about that? I can still yeah. watch TikTok. Well, see, and that's the thing, too, is I feel like people, when they watch that stuff, they feel like they have to act a certain way based off of what they see. Oh, sure. And that was the way, the same before uh, cell phones were prevalent. There's an image perpetrated upon the masses of this is how you behave. You know, in this society, it's you know, hurry up and work. Work, 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 work. And there's there's no set-aside um, how do you, how would you really say this? Uh, there's more to life than just work, 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 work. We, we, as a collective, have not been taught all the different aspects of our own personality and how to explore those and how to overcome our fears, our anxieties, how to uh, be a man without being toxic, how to be masculine without being... Uh, being masculine doesn't mean I'm rude and domineering and that's a whole other podcast. It just means being a man. And the same uh, with women. How... Uh, being feminine doesn't mean you wear short skirts where your ass is hanging out. Like yeah. in today's generation. In today's generation for a large part. It, because they're advertising. And that it, it's a sad state of affairs that, that that's the where a lot of people go. But that's still the reality that y'all face as young men in the United States. So how do you stop that? How do you stop attracting clingy girls? Well, you, you don't attract them you don't attract them or, or if you are attracted to them and you don't want to because of their physicality you just got to start weaning yourself off like i there's no other way if you want quality whether it's in people whether it's in your business relationships your personal relationships uh, with journals that you can buy on our website that are the best uh, if you want to do that you, you have to pick high quality in every aspect of your life. Like you're not going to go buy the cheapest work boots because mm -mm. you know you're going to be standing in them all day. You know, you, you want them to be comfortable. You want them to serve their purpose. You want to have some quality to them. <laughs> you're not going to buy the crappiest tools in your field of being an electrician. You're going to buy some good tools that are going to last you. That's the same thing with uh, your time. Or am I going to hey, spend my time in quality or am I going to spend it doing crap? So that is a uh, interesting exploration into what it's like. So I got out of it is uh, we should probably do the same thing as adults and look at ourselves so that we can end up changing the rest of the world. And we can only do that one person at a time, looking at ourselves and letting that ripple out. Because if not, then we're all doomed to sitting around watching TikTok. That'd be bad. Yeah, yeah that's gonna ruin everything. <laughs> we're here every Sunday, 1.30, come out. Oh, we're also doing martial arts. If anybody wants self-defense training, well, we're doing it for free. It's a lot of fun, every Wednesday at six o'clock. See ya.